we welcome you on behalf of our apostle, Apostle Dr. Courtney McLean and Reverend Nadine McLean. We welcome you on behalf of the ELT, the ministers, and all the leaders and Wafi family all around. God bless you. Thank you for joining us this morning. Our apostle is here, so I'm going to allow our apostle to take the lead this morning. God bless you, apostle. Over to you. Well, great morning, everyone. We give God thanks for another day. It is indeed the day that the Lord has made. We choose to rejoice. We choose to lift up and to honor his name. And so as you join us this morning, we will be moving straight into worship, straight into prayer. Amen. Father, we just love upon you this morning because of who you are. You are King of Kings. You are Lord of Lords. You are our strength, you are our shield, you are our song. There's absolutely none like you. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, your name is to be praised and you ought to be lifted up. We thank you for the songwriter said, he lifted me up from the miry clay, set my feet upon a rock. You planted my feet upon a rock. We thank you for where you brought us from. We thank you for delivering us out of darkness and translating us into your marvelous light. We thank you that you have started a good work in us. It is a good work. And you who have begun a good work in us, you will not stop until the work that you have started is complete. And so we open our lives to you and we pray that you will continue to work. Continue the work that you have started. Continue the work that you have started. You are taking us from one dimension of glory to the next dimension of glory. And we yield ourselves to you and ask that you continue to do just that. Cause us to move, cause us to flow, cause us to go from glory to glory, from faith to faith, from dimension to dimension. In the name of Jesus, ultimately it is our aim, ultimately it is our desire to look like you, to be like you, to function like you. We know that your word declares that, beloved, now are ye the sons of God, yet it does not appear. Yeah, but when you appear, we shall be like you. And so we pray, Lord God, for your appearing. We know that you will appear at the second coming, but we know that there are several other appearings. Lord God, where there is such manifestation of your presence, let your manifest presence be unveiled. Let your manifest presence be unlocked. In the name of Jesus, we open up our lives to you and we pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Libo Shada Lede Zudaz Zada Lebrobodo, that you, Lamaka Sanda Ragazudebe, would cause us to be translated, would cause us to be transformed afresh, would cause another leveling up, another transition. Mando Robo Shada, for we all with unveil face, beholding as in a mirror the glory of God, are changed into the same image from glory. Glory to glory. Let another dimension of your glory be released. Masata Robo Zebede. I pray that over your children this morning, another dimension of glory, another dimension of your presence. In the Dabazude, in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh God, manda raba sudebe ute, libro de 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 be udaba adaba urubo, another dimension of your glory, another dimension of your presence. In the name of Jesus, oh la braca tolo bo shanda da da bazude, lembranto de 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 cosin de de be, rimbando roco shanda da baka son de le meniote, zumba kakola bakakola bagadeze de, I break from their lives this morning. Everything that hinders the next dimension of glory, 
whether it be pride, let it be shattered, whether it be conceitedness, high-mindedness, let it be shattered, whether it be insecurity, let it be shattered, whatever hinders the next dimension of glory, your word declares, oh, we're foreseeing ye are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, ah, lay aside the weight and the sin which doth so easily beset you so that you can run again the race with patience and so i pray in the name of jesus that whatever weight is there whatever sin is there whatever hindrance is there let there be a shattering let there be a breaking let the ragazo I declare over your life as you join us this morning that God is revealing to you the different things in your life that operates as well dead weight that weighs you down and hinders your rising. I declare over your life in the name of Jesus that you will rise. I declare over your life that you are laying it aside. God is revealing it to you. God is opening up your eyes to the different things that hinders his glory and that hinders his presence. He's revealing it to you. He's opening it up to you. In the name of Jesus, in Jesus' name, you know, as I pray this morning, I remember when the besetting sin of fornication, of, you know, just wanting to go back to my old life, it was right there, lost uh, fornication, uh, pornography, alcoholism, and I tried to break free until the enemy said to me, it makes no sense. This is how you are. Or another thing that he said is that you weren't ready for Christianity. It's not your time. Just go back and wait until you are ready. There is someone on this morning besetting sin is holding you down. The warfare is heavy in your head. And I'm going to ask my daughter if you'd find for me Minister Samuel I think it is Romans 6, 11. I'm not 100% sure, but if you'd find that verse for me and tell me what it is, what it is saying. Romans 6, verse 11. Tell me what it is saying. Because someone must understand that it is the truth that you know that helps you to be free. For you shall know the truth and your freedom is appropriated by the revelation of God's truth. Go ahead if you're there for that. Yes, sir. All right, so Romans 6 verse 11 says, Likewise you also reckon yourselves to be dead indeed to sin, but alive to God in, right, in Christ Jesus our Lord. Hallelujah. That's the verse mm -hmm. now. Thank you so much. So likewise, ye also, ye also, which means others have done it, which means Paul had to do it. You know, many people believe that it wasn't Paul who wrote to Romans, but it's okay. I believe it's, it was Paul. And Paul said, reckon yourself therefore to be dead to sin, dead to sin, dead to sin. Dead to sin. You see, when the truth of that word hit my life, you see, sometimes we read the word, but until the revelation of that word grab a hold of your heart, you won't be free. When I saw that Courtney was dead to sin, that's when freedom came. And that happened 
within like the first year of me getting saved. That was 1992. As a matter of fact, I got saved in November 1992. So it's my birthday. It's my birth month in terms of salvation. And by the following year or the other year, I don't remember when it was, but I felt like, I mean, it, there was just so much pressure. I felt like I couldn't carry this thing called salvation. And there are many persons online. The Holy Spirit is opening my eyes right now. And I'm seeing persons serving God. But you're constantly going back to that addiction, back to that old habit. You have not gained dominion over your flesh, dominion over sin. But I declare Romans 6, 11, you are dead to sin. You see, you see, the, 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 the word of God says, it says, wherefore seeing we are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside the weight. Romans 12 verse 1, and the sin which does so easily beset us, lay it aside. Why? You can't rise with it. You can't run this race, this Christian journey with, with the, just like an athlete needs to be dressed for the, the, the athletics. You have got to be dressed. You have got to be wearing. You don't see athletes wearing windbreakers and track pants. And, no, 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 no. They try to be light. And so I declare the heaviness is leaving you. The different things that beset you, they are leaving you. God is not pushing you away. God is pulling you to himself. He's saying, repent before me, but this is the revelation that you need to walk in. You are dead to pornography. You are dead to masturbation. You are dead to alcoholism. You are dead to lust. You are dead to sin. Masuta labrote tapolo brobode. This is the last of it. I speak over your life that the God who kept me for the past 28 to 30 years, it is the same God that's going to keep you. You will walk in liberty. You will walk in freedom. You will walk in deliverance. You will function at a dimension that you have never functioned at in all the years of your life. Sin will no longer have dominion over you. In the the name of Jesus Christ. I feel the Holy Ghost. Daughter, there's no way an intercessor, every one of us are called to be an house of prayer. You are called to be a house of prayer. There's no way you can be a house of prayer and you are someone who is living in sin. When you say, devil, I bind you. What you are saying, what you are doing is that you are standing between the enemy and that thing. And when there are open doors in your life, you come under all sorts of demonic attacks because you have not, you are, you are, you, you are not at the place where you can war effectively without an opening for the enemy to counterattack you, to counterattack you. And so, and so, and so. It's very, very important as you close out this year, 2024, that you sanctify yourself. Lord, sanctify me through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Lord, wash me again. Lord, cleanse me again. And let every open door in my life be closed in the name of Jesus Christ. Mandorum de Lemenyota. I declare unforgiveness, bitterness, resentment is leaving you right now. I declare rebellion, disobedience is leaving you right now. You will not function like Lucifer. You will bring your life under authority. I declare in the name of Jesus. You are dead to sin. You are dead to sin. And you are alive unto Christ. That means you are responsive to Christ. When he says jump, you jump. When he says give, you give. When he says pray, you pray. When he says move, you move. You are alive. Oh, 
Oh, you are alive to Christ. You are alive to spiritual things. I declare a revival in your spirit, a revival in your soul, because the carnal things, the sinful things, yeah, those things, lebrokoshanda ragaso, they neutralized your sensitivity to the, the spirit. You couldn't even worship. You couldn't even sense the Holy Ghost. But there's a shift in your life this morning. Your sensitivity is being heightened. Your sensitivity to the spirit of God is increasing. I speak over your life. To as many as receive him, to them gave you power to become sons of God. You are a son of God because you have received Christ. Oh, and I also hear him saying, Those who are led by the Spirit of God, they are sons of God. Oh, yes, he's leading you, and you are sensitive to his leading. You are sensitive to his leading. Your sensitivity is increasing. Everything in your life that him that your sensitivity is shattered by fire, shattered by fire. It's under your feet in the name of Jesus. You are walking in dominion. You are walking in authority. When you say, I bind, it will be bound. When you say, I loose, it will be loose. Because your authority is increasing. Because grace is increasing. I will speak over your life. You are walking in victory. You are walking in dominion. You are walking in authority. Lebo shabadonda da da baduda. Lebendo do 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 bokoteke. Ibadonda bakashonda lebadiondo do 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 bo. Sanga rabakasa. Holy Spirit of God. Lebo shabando do do samana. Ibondo rakatolo bo. Lebrote katunda da da ba ishko bragade elede do bo. Lembronda da bagazi. Holy Spirit of God, I thank you for freedom over your people this morning and every spirit. Because in order for a demon to have access, you must have been walking in sin before. You must have opened the door to him before. Listen to me. The enemy cannot just room for rent apply within and just have free reign to run in and out of your life. Uh, 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 uh. No, 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 no. I declare, if you just repented, I command that spirit in the name of Jesus, let them go. Fear out. Fear, insecurity, liberal fear of rejection, fear of failure, fear, fear, fear of the dark, fear, fear of sickness, fear of the enemy. Fear, whatever fear it is, it is leaving you in the name of Jesus Christ. I speak and out, Masuda Bragada, whatever, oh yeah, 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 whatever entered your life, even from your mother's womb, even through the bloodline, up and out, I sever from the umbilical cord in the name of Jesus Christ. I cut you loose and I set you free in the in name of Jesus. The blood of Jesus Christ is against you, devil. Loose your hold. Every mind-binding and mind-controlling spirit, where your thoughts, those ungodly thoughts, those unwholesome thoughts, must everything that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, we pull it down and we bring it into captivity to the obedience of Christ. As of today, you carry the mind of Christ. And you will not allow the enemy to have a field day in your mind. You arrest thoughts and you bring them into captivity to the obedience of Christ. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I speak over your life, child of God. Pornography, sexual immorality, all sorts of perversion. It leaves you lesbianism, homosexuality, whatever it is. I'm scared. You're free in the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah, you're free, 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 you're free. Freedom is here, freedom is here, freedom is here, freedom is here, freedom is here. Lay your hand on yourself and declare, I'm free. I'm free. I'm free. I'm free. That confusion thing, it's over. It's oh, you spirit of confusion. Up and up. Up and let them go. Let them go. Loose them. Now. 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 
Let them go. Loose them. Some of you feel like you, you things coming up out of you. Run to the bathroom if you need to. Some of you show back la bato kaka la bato bo. I declare the fire of God in your belly. The, the enemy will not be comfortable living in your temple. Your body is not the temple of devils. It is the temple of the Holy Spirit. And so every other spirit from Functioning in your temple, lay in Jesus' name. Now, 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 in Jesus' name. Spirits of infirmity go, whether through the bloodline, or it doesn't matter how you enter. I command you to leave. They have repented. Your legal right, the open door is closed. Yow! In the name of Jesus, Mazu Ele Oto Aba Akoto Motaba Le Prota Papa Kakoraba Kakapaka. In the mighty name of Jesus, let them go, let them go, let them go, let them go, let them go. Unforgiveness. You release everyone who has offended you. Let them go. You release the molester. You release the rapist. You release the abuser. You release the, mm -hmm. let them go. Let them go. And as you let go, there's a letting go. Some of you are sighing. Some of you start crying. Some of you, some of you, you feel like you're, you're passing gas. Yes. Some of you feel as if you want to use the bathroom. And in the name of Jesus, every trespasser on God's property. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, let them go. Let them go. Let them go. Whom the sun set free is free indeed. You are a child of God. Yes, you are. In your father's house, there is room for you. You're a child of God. Yes, you are. Even the atmosphere around you is changing. Even the atmosphere around you is changing. Something is happening. Don't miss this deliverance. You know, this was not on my mind when I came on. Yeah. But we are subject to the spirit. And he's setting you free. No more torment. Woo! <laughs> no more torment. No more torment. He's the prince of peace. So why is it that you're living in torment? Even if you're going through a situation, you can go through with peace. That torment, restlessness, anxiety, worry, confusion. Live! And inhale the peace and the grace for this leg of your journey. It's all over you. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Go ahead, minister. Shiba Ranto Koteli Bastia. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I, I feel the presence of God so strong. I feel the fire of God. This, this is powerful. This is powerful as 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 Apostle shared, you know, it, it just take me back to when I was under that stronghold of sin. And, you know, as, as, you, as you shared that, you know, something came to my mind when you pray against fear, fear of this and fear of that. And the Holy Spirit just brought something to me. He said, some persons are, are, are afraid of dying. And I was thinking, you know, the physical death. But then the Holy Spirit said, no, it's a spiritual, it's dying to sin because 
they they believe that that's that's a place that they they are, they belong to they are, they are not belonging to that place they are afraid to let it go they, they are afraid to to die to yield to to surrender totally to God because it takes you letting go some things it takes you walking away from some things it it, it, it requires hard decisions and and it can leave you looking like you're soft sometimes I even look like you are stupid but I am telling you if you can open up yourself to the Holy Spirit and allow him to kill that part of you the reward will be great, I tell you, because I have testimonies. I'm not going into, into them this morning, but I have testimonies. I know what it's like to, to live in that place where you're under the stronghold of sin. This prayer is, is, is powerful and relevant at this time that you said that was not on your heart. But I believe someone online this morning needed that 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 prayer you know uh when we look at the life of peter he was walking with jesus but he needed to die in another area of his life and it requires that he went through deceiving you know and that is another thing sometimes th that dying to sin requires that you go through something because not all of us are fully submitted to the word of god and will sit and allow god to work on us and sometimes he have to shake us up or take us through something for us to really change and so this morning i i want to encourage you to open up yourself to god and allow him to work the work that he has started within you Allow him to kill that part of you that is raining. You said something again, a person that I, I really want to share. And you know, when you talk about the enemy having free reign in our life, I remember when I was reading John 10, 10, and it says, the thief cometh not but to kill and steal and destroy. And I, when I meditated on that verse, the Holy Spirit said to me, the day that the enemy comes and he just walk in and hold a seat, it means that he's your guest. You are the one that is living a life that is allowing him to feel welcome in your life. But when you start setting standard to live a consecrated life, because to live a consecrated life requires standard, requires that you place, you put standard in place so that you can guard your life from, from the enemy coming in and, and taking up position in your life as if he belongs there. But the thing is, many of us, don't, when we think about consecrate, consecration or living a consecrated life, we don't really understand that it requires that we set standard. It's, it, it's not automatic. Even when, when God deal with that part of your life, and if you are someone who is not intentional about maintaining that, you can be holy yesterday and today you are living another lifestyle. You know what I mean? So you have to have that standard, that balance, that, that structure to say, this is what our spiritual goals, as you, as you said, that spiritual goals, you have a goal when it comes to living a life of holiness. You have a goal when it comes to overcoming sin and, and you, you identify the, the things that you are dealing with and say, God, I cannot live with this and I'm surrendering my life totally to you. I'm bringing my life under the blood of Jesus Christ so that I can become more like you. And then you put the standard. If you know that you step through that door, some, you're going to fall into something. Don't walk through it. Put the standard in place. When you find yourself dead to sin, don't allow that demons to, to rise again. Because anything at all that you entertain that is not of God can resurrect that, that, that sin in your life. And so this morning, I want to encourage you as we, we I, I'm, I'm just, I'm just thinking about <laughs> all those days when I was struggling, serious struggle, serious struggle, you know, and even when I, when I was delivered, you know, I, 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 I live with guilt. The, the, that guilt, the enemy put that guilt, condemnation, and you keep hearing you are not worthy. You 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 are not worthy. You know, see, you can't please God. You know, see, you know, see how you live. You know, see what you do, and all of those things. But this morning, we are free. But who the Son set free is free indeed. And as we walk in that liberty, put the standard in place so that you can live a victorious life. God bless you. It's a miserable thing, you know, if you can't live in victory, you know, because you are saved, but you're not enjoying your Christianity and you're not fully enjoying the world 
you are in between. You are a miserable person. You're a miserable person. I know what that is like. Misery. And so, you know, as, as Minister Nikian said, holiness becomes a goal. That's what I normally say. Holiness must become a goal. And this morning, God is increasing your desire to pursue holiness, to pursue righteousness. And you can have fun in Christianity. You know, the devil wants to play on your mind and make you think that you're going to miss out. You're not going to be able to whatever, whatever. Listen, God can kill. And this is why fasting is so important. Because when you fast, it helps to kill those desires and those different things that wants to dominate your taste bud, that wants to dominate your life. I speak over your life this morning. I said, I speak over your life this morning. I said, I speak over your life this morning. You are God's child. Oh yes, you are a son of God. You are a child of God. You are dead to sin and alive unto Christ. Yes, 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 yes. You put off the old man and you put on the new man. Yes, yes. Yes, oh, la badobosa. You are a house of prayer. You are a house of prayer. You pray always and you don't faint. Every test that you go through, you pull on the revelation of God's word. You don't depend on yourself. Listen to me. We are nothing without him. You don't have the power to live the Christian life. Let me set you free. Of yourself, you don't have the power to live this Christian life. You can only live this Christian life as you yield and die and allow Christ to live the life through you. Galatians 2.20, I am crucified with Christ. When you went under the water and you were baptized, what that represents is you being buried. The old Courtney was buried when I went under the water. And I came up, yes, as a resurrected being. But not the old Courtney being resurrected. No, the new man that was dead in sin, my spirit man that was dead in sin and trespasses, that spirit man is now quickened, is now alive. So I've been resurrected with Christ. The life I now live, I live by faith of, not in, of the Son of God. Which means that it is Christ who is living this life to me. But watch this now. Watch this. Watch this. Even though I am dead to sin, I am a dead man with a will. <laughs> And so one of the greatest things that a Christian can do is to sing, I surrender all, all to Jesus, I surrender all. So, so your will must constantly be crucified, must constantly be yielded. That's why the Apostle Paul said, I die daily. So even though I'm crucified with Christ, if any man should come unto me, let him deny himself. Ooh. Take up his cross. Why would he need to take up his cross? Because even though you were crucified with Christ, you must crucify your will daily. Daily you must surrender. Daily you must yield. Because you are a, a, you are a seed with a will. You are living stones. And so without that surrender, Christ can't do anyone, do with you. You have to reach the place where you die. You have to reach the place where you surrender. And the more you surrender, the easier it is. And so when you have self-willed persons, strong-willed persons, persons who are very opinionated, it is difficult for God to work with you. Because you are not dead yet. That's a mouthful. <laughs> go ahead, daughter. I see you itching to go. Go ahead. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm really 
that powerful, powerful, I'm a dead man with a willpower. And so daily, I must die. I must surrender my will to yeah. God. That's powerful. I, I just want to hear you teach me. You know, I mean, you teach me, teach me, apostle, teach me. This is powerful. I mean, you know, sometimes it can seem, because I said this earlier, that sometimes your will seem like it's the right way to go. Yeah. It seems like, I mean, God, your will don't make no sense to me. But when you are dead, you know, when you are dead, you are alive unto Christ in all areas of your life, even to his will. And that doesn't mean it's easy. It, it will challenge you. It will squeeze you. Sometimes you cry on some tears. But when you are dead, oh, it, it, makes, it makes it easier, as you said, Apostle. It makes it easier for you to, to accept the will of God. I, you know, I remember one day I got up and I just started saying yes. I just started saying yes. And, and I said to God, I, I don't have any more no in my heart for you. It's just yes, Lord. I accept your will. Whatever your will look like, I accept your will. Because the struggle is when you are refusing his will. You know that you are supposed to accept it, but you are fighting with it. That's where the struggle really is. The moment you yield, God starts giving you the grace to, to walk in his will. And so I'm here for you to teach me. Apostle, over to you. My, my daughter, the, I remember going through a season. I bless God for Bishop Delphi Davis and Power of Faith. And I used to, while I was in Bible school, I remember there were days I would go over Power of Faith. And I would be just on the ground, in the, in the one of the corner. I don't need to meet Bishop. You know, some people, they, they come to church and you feel like you have to meet the man of God. It, it's not about a man. And I remember I was on the ground and I was crying out and, 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 and I got some of the old psalms entered me. My all is on the altar and I'm waiting for the fire. I am waiting, I am waiting. And I remember singing those songs, singing those songs at home. My all is on the altar. And that's why, daughter, for me to make unpopular decisions today, decisions that my members might not even understand, decisions that the world might not even understand, but I know God spoke to me and he said, do this unpopular thing. Because my all is on the altar, I can do it. When you are very, daughter, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit. Are we on YouTube this morning? Uh, I'm not sure. Are we live? Are we live on, both, on all platforms? L listen, listen. When I said this the other day, and I want to say it again, when Adam and Eve sinned, the first thing that happened was a self-awareness, a consciousness of self. Before sin, there was a, a serious consciousness of God. After sin, I realize I'm naked. I am ashamed. I, I, I. When you yield to God, you are not thinking about what people are going to think. When you yield to God, can you imagine? Every day I got up, all I'm doing it looked like I was worthless. Every day I got up. I didn't have any job. And so I got up and I got in the Bible. I had no job. I got up. I got some fruits. I got some water. And I had, I had a shower. And I head to my room. And for hours I'm reading God's word. How did I look? Ah, that's your problem. How does it look? That shifted my life. Jesus said to his disciples, you are clean 
because of the word I have spoken to you. It is not just the blood that cleanses. In the tabernacle, in the tabernacle, in the, you said I must teach you. You're pulling on the teaching grace, all right? In the tabernacle, the, 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 you have the brazen altar where the priest would, the, the, the individual wanting to be cleansed would bring the animal, the priest would tie it on the altar, the individual would put his hand on the animal, confessing his sins, the priest would kill the animal and there would be a transference of the guilt and the sins of the individual to the innocent animal. And the animal was judged and the person is free. That's grace. Jesus is, 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 is represented there by that lamb by that goat, by that animal. And so your sin is transferred to, to, to the animal, to Jesus, and you are free. But after the priest is finished, the priest now goes to the brazen lava. It is called the bronze wash basin. It was filled with water. And the priest now before he goes into the holy place, he because these are the two pieces of furniture that were in the outer court. Before he goes in the holy place, before you can get deeper, he had to look in the brazen uh, 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 lava, in the wash basin. And when he looked in the wash basin, he would see his reflection and he would see... Uh, uh, blood, he would see spots, he would see things on him from the place of sacrifice and he would see his reflection and he would wash it off and he would wash it off and he would wash it off because he can't go in the holy place that way that burden, that sin that guilt, that condemnation that you carry, you can't go further if it's on you Morocco say what what so 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 we look now the bible says what find the scripture for my daughter the bible says we look in the perfect law of liberty that is the word of god you, what, what does it mean to look in it, it, it to, to look in a mirror you see your reflection you see your reflection so as you see your reflection now, you can't cleanse your reflection. It is the same thing that show you your reflection that cleanses what you see. So the things that you see in you that's not supposed to be there, you can't cleanse it. It is the same water that shows it to you that you use to wash it off. Are you listening to me? So you use the word of God and you said, no, I am dead to sin. I see the sin, but I am dead to sin. You use the word of God and you say, I see, I see the form fornication but I'm not a fornicator I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus and you use the word and you wash yourself so that you can go deeper so when you are stuck where you are because you have not been washing yourself with the word I don't say teach anymore <laughs> let's pull it up right there go ahead daughter go ahead you find that scripture for me <laughs> I didn't catch this scripture, sir, so you can't just... Yeah, it says we look in the perfect law of liberty. Okay. Uh-huh. Are you guys receiving this word this morning? So, so, so it is the word that shows you the spots on you. But it is the same word. It's not just the blood that cleanses you. In 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 uh, Ephesians in in John fifteen rather in John fifteen Jesus said you are clean because of the word I have spoken unto you in Ephesians five the Bible says husbands you wash your wife with the sincere water of the word that you may present her spotless. That's how Christ washes us with the water of his word so he can present us as a spotless bride. You can't do it by yourself. It is Christ in me, the hope of glory. It is Christ in me, the hope of things to come. 
and I know that no good thing dwelleth in me that is in my flesh. But every good thing comes from the Spirit. So you have to allow yourself to be washed by the Word. Were you able to find it, daughter? Yes, Apostle, I found it. It says, it's James, uh, James chapter 1, verse 25. Mm -hmm. I'm going to read it from the King James Version. It says, but whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continueth therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, but he, a doer of the work. He, he being what? Not be he being not a forgetful hearer. Okay, okay, uh huh. But a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. All right. So you look in the perfect law of liberty. Now, when you look in the word of God, it shows you your reflection. So you use the word of God now and you start washing yourself by affirming that you are who the word of God says that you are. Yes, when you start doing Osha Baranga Tonda La Braka Tolo Bagazadaba, this is how you get deliverance, you know. For you shall know the truth, and the truth that you know shall set you free. The truth shall make you free. You can't get freedom by yourself. So watch this now. Watch this now. You wash yourself with the word. I am what the word of God says I am. I can do what the, if the word of God says be holy, I can be holy. I am holy, I am righteous, I am, I am, I am. And you wash yourself with the water of the word. And the more you wash yourself with the water of the word, the more you start doing that word. That's why now you go to Joshua chapter one and verse eight. Yes, yes, yes. Let not this book of the law depart from your mouth. So you're speaking it. Yes, then the more you speak it, the more you think it. You meditate on it day and night. This is why you don't pray with a closed Bible. You pray with an open Bible. You have your Bible open and you have scripture passages marked. And those are the scripture passages that you are taking and turning them into prayer. Whatever the word of God says, that's what you're praying and you're not praying from a place of begging you're praying from a place of affirming meaning it's already done and the more you do that the more the word becomes flesh now and then the manifestation of that word you become a doer of that word you start walking in the revelation of that word watch what the bible says don't let this book of the law depart out of your mouth meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful, oh, oh, to do what is in it. So, so watch this. What does meditation? Meditation is really saturation. Meditation, simply put, is you speaking it, thinking it, shouting it, internalizing it. That's saturation. So meditation is soaking yourself in word. Then you will observe to do. You can't do it until it enters you, until it soak you. It is when it soak you and it saturate you. It's in your heart now. So it's more like a reflex because it's in you. Many are you trying to do what is not in you. So there's a gap between <laughs> the action you are trying to carry out and the place of your heart. This is why as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word because you are what you eat <laughs> that you may grow thereby. So when this word fills you now you can't help but to allow what is in you to flow out. Give God praise this morning. We can pull it up right there. And that's how deliverance takes place. Because you no longer see yourself as a fornicator. You no longer see yourself as a gay man trying to be free. You no longer see yourself as a lesbian trying to be free. You see yourself as a son of God. Because the word becomes flesh. And then now, when you walk, there is no residue of homosexuality. 
nobody can look at you. They would have to know from before. When they look on you, they don't see nothing like that. And that's what justification is. Just as if. Justification. Just as if you never did it. And that's the level of freedom and deliverance. When I share my story, people can that apostle, we can't say that. That's all just, he wants to justify you. He wants to free you. We're going to stop right there. I hope you're free because you shall know the truth and the truth that you know. I think that's John 8, 32 or something like that. The truth that you know shall set you free. Will you spend time in God's word? Will you eat the word so that you can become the word? So that you'll maintain the freedom that God gave you today. Deliverance came today. But without the word, you won't keep it. Keep it, please. Please, I beg you. There are people waiting on you. Not this version of you, but the other version of you. Please type in the chat what your greatest takeaway is. And if you believe this, program can be a blessing to somebody that I want for you to share it, love it, repost it. If you like what we did this morning, then by all means like it. Because the more you do that, the more other people will catch on. And if you are not subscribed, then subscribe. If you are not following, then follow. So once we are on, you will know. Go ahead, daughter. Your greatest learning or maybe it's not new, but it was... Uh, Light was shed on it. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> I I I don't know how possible but, you know tears came to my eyes because I felt like a newborn baby drinking milk. When I heard you say it, I was like, that's exactly what I was thinking. You know, I was saying this feels like I'm drinking milk. Like even though, as you said. I know these things, but it felt like I needed to hear it again. You know, I, I feel refreshed. You know, I was challenged again when it comes to dying to sin. You know, I, I, I when you eat that word, you know, it becomes, it becomes Be that thing in you that when sin knocks at your door, it sends off an alert in your spirit. And immediately, you know that can't do it because something something is not not feeling right and so when you talk about eating the word that that really challenged me because you see sometimes you said something oh, 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 again takeaway is that you pulled on my teaching grace that's my takeaway you made a demand when you said teach me and uh, I want somebody online to understand this so I am a fivefold minister I teach I'm an apostle I prophesy I'm an evangelist I'm a pastor. Wow. Did, 
the, the demand you make determine what you get most of the time. Yes. Yes. <laughs> when they approach Jesus and they say, Rabbi, <laughs> Rabboni, they're pulled on his teaching grace. And sometimes they call him prophet. They're pulled on that. Yes. And so you, you have to recognize and make a demand on the grace. This is why people who see you and see us, just as brother so-and-so or Paul or Peter, or, you know, first name basis, pull on the grace, the grace that you pull on. Because honestly, I felt the teacher. I felt the grace. I felt like we went. We went into stuff that we would not normally go in on the live. And I felt that. Pull. I felt it. I felt it. So you pulled on that and it came. I felt that, daughter. I felt that. Yeah. Your apostle showed that you are truly yielded to God. Because, pull on it, man. I really, I really wanted you to teach me this one, and I really catch some things. And as I said, I'm going to watch it again. You know, I, I, I'm challenged. And you know what, Apostle, you can never get to a place where you outgrow teaching like this. If you ever feel like you pass that stage, a problem, it's gonna be problematic for you because you are a child. When when we are before God, we are we are children. You know, mm -hmm. and we can't lead. Big people sometimes hard to lead. You lead children are easier to lead than 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 big, strong, big people. Prophets say mighty ones, smart ones. <laughs> you know, so you, you have to be at a place where you are teachable, you know, pliable. And you, you, you cannot outgrow teachings. You cannot, you know, don't, don't tell me that. You know, I know this already. I, if, you, if you're at that place, a problem, not even the Holy Spirit can teach you. And so this morning, I am so grateful you poured into me. I don't know about anybody else, but I feel so refreshed. And I just want to say thank you, that thank you for allowing the Holy Spirit of God to use you. You take me to, to the, 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 the Old Testament, I'm like, oh my God. I feel like when they are Bible school, I, I really, really appreciate it. Yeah, I felt that grace this morning, daughter. Like I said, you tapped into that, you know? Um, and and that's what happens when you have honor. That's what happens when you have belief. And, and like I said, that's what happens when you make a demand. When you make a demand, things happen. And so I want uh, for somebody else to understand. That's my takeaway. And I see several persons online here. Reverend Kesima says, I must die daily to self as the spirit of God becomes more alive in me. God bless you, my daughter. God bless you. We have Minister Megan who is saying, daughter, could you check YouTube for me? She's saying, another takeaway, Apostle, is to become, we become what we eat. As I eat the word, I become the word. It changes me. That's so true, daughter. That is so true, daughter. And then we have Carlene Robinson. God bless you, Carlene. And she said, my greatest takeaway is the importance of eating the word and believing that we are who the word says we are. I receive this word and will not just hear it, but act upon it. And that's very important, Carlene. That's very important. Because as you are washing yourself, you are not saying, I am going to. You are saying, I am. And as you do that, you start seeing the revelation. You start seeing the manifestation of that in your life. You start becoming. You start becoming it. You become holy, even though you are holy already positionally. But when you begin to believe that no are ye holy, you are a chosen generation, a holy nation, a, a peculiar people. When you believe that, you live that. If you don't believe that, and if you believe you're a sinner, then you're always going to be a sinner. But you must believe that you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, and the old you is dead. Amen. Amen. So I give you one. I see Cheryl Cohen. Morning, I came on last, but just in time to hear 
how to let ourselves wash and meditate on the word of God. Amen. And then we have Andrea Prosper Anson. Prosper, daughter, Prosper. It is the same mirror that shows me myself that cleanses me. That was a big one. That was a big one. So the same water that you use to see your reflection, it is the same water of the word that you use to wash away what needs to be removed. I will continue to look into the word and pray with an open Bible. That's a big one, Andrea. That's a very, very big one. Nicole Townsend, my greatest takeaway is if you are dead to self, you are, if you are not dead to self, you are very opinionated. That's true, Nicole. That's true. That's true. Do we have any of the sons, any of the brothers online who can comment? I'm seeing the daughters who are commenting, and this is very, very good. But if we could get a man to talk as well. Melissa, happy belated birthday, my daughter. I hope you had a great day yesterday. Melissa is a faithful daughter, I'm telling you. Melissa's takeaway is that the same word okay that convicts me should also i should also use it to wash me i am what i eat and so the best food is the word of god amen daughter take over and give me two from facebook since we're not seeing any on youtube okay apostle so i'm seeing oh my I saw, let me see, uh, Deborah Burrell. She said, my greatest takeaway is that we pray with an open Bible, allow the word to wash and cleanse you so you can be dead to self daily. And she said, she bless God for you. Lady Cheryl Simpson said, my greatest takeaway is I must die daily to self and I must use the word to become. Uh, trying to see if I see any more. All right, I'm not seeing any more at this time that so yeah, that's good. It's, it's now 736. It's time to wrap yes, up. Sir. Yes, sir. Many, but we could stop right there. We could stop right there. God bless you, everyone. Uh thank you for joining us this morning. You know, just live the word. Just live the word. Spend time with the Lord. Um, IBG was indeed big. IBG was big. Somebody said, no, oh, that's one of the best. That's one of the best. That's one of the best. We truly, truly give God glory. I can say we have been reset. I can say I feel renewed. I personally feel renewed, um, revived, and I'm ready. That theme did not come from flesh and blood. That theme came from the spirit himself. And I believe we lived it, though the preacher didn't stand up and said, today we're going to talk about reset. Today we're going to talk about renewed, revived, and ready. The essence of the theme was demonstrated. And I can say we, we won't be the same. That's what I can say. And from the preacher, he said, no, this is by far well, his musician who travels with him everywhere, I believe, um, says this is by far one of the best churches you have been. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the people are hungry, the honor, the word, the miracles, the it's powerful. It, it was it was powerful. Uh, we give God glory. Truly, truly give God glory. Now, before I go, uh, tomorrow I will be in Orlando, by God's grace. Amen. And I'll be preaching there Thursday night, Friday night. Yes, I'll be there. You guys make sure you go to church, all right? Yes, I'll be there Sunday. I'm not hiding it. I'll be there Sunday. So you can't stay at your yard because pastor, <clears throat> gone, foreign, gone, preach. I must have pastor, yeah, worship. Let me drink some water. Right. So I'll be, there, <laughs> I'll be there from, I'll preach Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, and I come back Monday by God's grace. 
and we're looking forward to a great time over there. You guys pray for me. How many of you will pray and how many will add some fasting? Thank you, Minister Nikki. Pray. When you know that I'm going to be on, you should be praying. You should be praying, believing that, you know, the Apostle Paul said, pray for me that utterance would be given, that God would give me boldness, that he would fill my mouth with the right words, you know. Pray, pray that God would stretch forth his hand and do miracles and signs and wonders, and he would confirm his word with that. Pray, 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 pray. So I'm going over there to the Leechmans. So that's uh, Reverend Clooney and uh, Pastor Yvette Leachman in Orlando. So if you know persons in that vicinity, tell them, join us. We're going to put the flyer up. I'm not sure if Brittany, if you have the flyer or if we're going to be doing those things that we normally do with upcoming events, then that would be good. But we ask for your prayer. Wafit Kingston is going to be powerful this Sunday. I know it will be, as well as all the campuses, HQ, Clarendon, New York, Florida, Canada. They are all going to be powerful. Amen. Amen. Ah, uh, what else? What else is there? Brittany, I didn't get any response from Brittany. Is she there? Um, uh, what else? Oh, tomorrow is Power Wednesday. Morris Power Wednesday. And tonight should have been in-house separation. But, I mean, we went so hard last week. Please stay home and we will just come on live. Please. Yesterday, I had to just rest. I had to just rest. Many, many persons took the day off yesterday. <laughs> because it was really intense. Amen and amen. We love you. God bless you. Go on out and make it an absolutely amazing day because it already is. Daughter, you know what I came on to share this morning? I wanted us to share five steps to a winning year as we prepare for 2025. And we were going to speak about being purged, being washed. So even though I didn't go into it, we spoke about it. You know, the word washes and the word purges. Please, I beg you. May God give you understanding as you open up the word and may your life be changed forever. In Jesus' name, God bless you.